Celebrating 30 years of phenomenal trend forecasting. Here's Gerald Salenti with today's trends in the news. Hi, this is Gerald Salenti. It's Friday, June 7, 2019. And here is some of today's trends in the news. On the market front, everybody's higher. Except Shanghai, it's a bit lower. So, oil up, gold up again. Bitcoin up. Dow jumps 260 points. Best week since November after job report spurs rate cut hopes. How's that for a negative positive? Lousy job numbers. That means the Federal Reserve is going to lower interest rates. The U.S. economy added 75,000 jobs in May, and they they, uh, brought down the other couple of months, too. They uh, brought those numbers down. Marking the second time in four months, the job growth totaled less than 100,000. They expected 180,000 jobs to be created in May, so they were only off eh, 105,000. Hey, but we're experts. So, market expectations for a Fed cut in June rose to 27.5 from 16. Now, here's the important thing as well. Treasury yields fell broadly, with the benchmark 10-year rate dropping to its lowest since 2017, and the dollar came down a little bit. dollar came down a little bit because they're going to lower interest rates, and that devalues the dollar. But what's going to go up? The yuan? Doubt it. Not so great over there in China. Oh, by the way, I mentioned the Shanghai was down. Yeah, it was down over 1%, and it's been going down. Oh, the Indian rupee? Nah, I don't think so. How about that euro? I doubt it. So... Gold. Read your trend alert, your trend alert that went to you, the gold bull run. I am not bragging, but our forecasts on gold have been the top of the top, going back from 2005 when I said the first bull was running, the golden bull, to now. We have hit the ups and the downs, and we're saying, here's the deal. Gold today closed at... $1,335. So here's the deal. When it breaks over $1,385, it's going to go to that $1,450 mark. That's our real breakout point. When it hits that point, I am saying it's going to go toward $2,000 an ounce. There's a global slowdown. What does it mean? It means they're going to print more money and devalue their currencies with all this digital currency printed on nothing and backed by nothing. So what else do they have over here? This is the, this is the stupidity of the way they write here. Gold has also benefited from concerns that U.S. trade wars with Mexico and China will slow the global economy. You know what that is? Oh, come on now. That ain't even bullshit. That's horseshit. It's horseshit. It's the moronic crap that you get from the mainstream media. That's CNBC. And that's why you subscribe to the Trends Journal at TrendsJournal.com. That has nothing. Oh, yeah. Gold is going up because, the yeah, makes perfect nonsense. So... Oil. Oil went up a little bit because they're saying over there that the Saudis have made a deal to cut back on production with others, but it's going to be a supply and demand issue. And we've already seen Commerce Bank revise their third quarter forecast of Brent down to $66 a barrel from $73. A slow global economy. More supply than demand, unless, of course, the maniacs create a war in the Middle East. And what else do we have here? Okay. Investors are mispricing Fed's next move on rates, says Goldman Sachs and UBS. Well, we say that's a lot of... Warning, warning, bullshit alert. They're going to lower interest rates. 
I said this back in March in our trend alerts and in the trends journals. They're going to lower them probably at least four times by the 2020 elections, the presidential reality show. Now, remember, the yield on the short-term Treasury bills currently exceeds those on the longer-term bills. This phenomenon known as inverted yield curve has preceded just about every recession yeah, since the mid-1970s. So, they're going to lower interest rates, as they did in Australia, as their economy slowed to the worst time since the great financial crisis. And what did they do over there in uh, India? Ah, India cuts interest rates as growth slows. They're going to keep dumping all the dough they can to keep that bull that's drugged out on that monetary methadone running. Don't believe me? How about somebody you would never believe to tell you anything honest because he's a bankster, former Goldman Sachs gang cat that ran the uh, European division that's now the head of the European Central Bank. Mario Draghi. Yeah, piece of Draghi dirt. Draghi lines up fresh stimulus as parting shot at boosting Eurozone. Oh, Goldman Sachs says they're not going to lower interest rates in the United States. We'll bet against Goldman, but they'll beat us anyway because they'll swindle the deal like all the banksters do. Here they go. The bank is ready to use, there's a quote, all the instruments that are in the toolbox, the full box, the central banksters, man. Oh, got to be proper here. Women. Yeah, it's a rig game. It's a dirty, stinking, rotten game that's only enriched the rich, that's artificially boosted the equity markets, propped up the economies in a phony way, as we, the little people in Slavelandia, don't make enough money to make ends meet. Oh, nearly one in three American workers. You ready for this? Bullshit. This is the language they use with a side hustle, still struggle to make ends meet. Side hustle? Gig economy? Mm. You got to work all the time and you still can't make ends meet. But hey, the rich got a lot richer, didn't they? Yeah, we got three people here in the United States. Buffett, Bezos, Gates got more dough than half the population. 26 what billionaires Got more dough than half the world's population. Two-thirds of the income participants say their extra income <laughs> accounts for less than half of their monthly earnings, but they need the extra cash to pay regular expenses. Great, huh? Gig economy. What a bunch of bullshit that is. Anyway, speaking about slowing down economies... Fitch downgrades Mexico's outlook, and so does Moody's. A global slowdown. It's real, and it's going to get worse. And that's why one of the reasons why we believe gold prices are going to go up. Homelessness grows in California despite new government spending. Grows, it's going to balloon in a city, in a country near you as this greatest recession that's going to end up worse than the Greatest Depression. Once that Ponzi scheme finally ends of monetary methadone that they call quantitative easing and negative and zero interest rates finally explodes. They're running out of tools. You're going to see the Federal Reserve in the United States do more quantitative easing as well. How well will it work? Time will tell because they come up with schemes you can't imagine that they dream up of. And on to some global news. You know, they celebrated the anniversary of D-Day. And the Russians, you know, they didn't like that they were uh, not included in it. Russia says D-Day memorials are part of a false history of World War II, meant to airbrush out the Soviet Union. 
They lost some 25 million people in Russia during World War II. The Russians came in from the east. The Allied forces came in from the west. They were very instrumental in defeating Hitler. But, again, we only get one side of the story, and that's why you subscribe to the Trends Journal at trendsjournal.com. U.S. commander says Iran remains imminent threat to U.S. forces in the Middle East. Top U.S. commander in the Middle East, General Frank McKenzie, told interviewers on Thursday that he believes Iran remains, quote, an intimate threat to the United States. He said that, quote, I don't believe that threat has diminished. It's probably evolved in certain ways, he said. Huh. Hey, get the hell out of the Middle East, wanker. You got no damn business being there. How would you like if Iran was on the West Coast or the East Coast or the Gulf of Mexico? How about that bases up in Canada? Like America has bases all around Iran. But that's okay. We're the exceptionals. The exceptional murderers who spend trillions to kill millions and lie us into war. Where's the outrage? Isn't any. It's America. Occupy Peace, OccupyPeace.com. Get out of the Middle East. Stay on the East and West Coast. Venezuela exodus surpasses 4 million, according to the UN. More sanctions, more misery, and more of your top trends for 2019. Human waves. And it's global. And it's going to keep happening. They had that election over there in Denmark. And the Populist Party went down. The Establishment Party went up. You know why? Because the Establishment Party said... We got to stop these immigrants from coming in. Human waves. But nobody talks about why the human waves are waving out. Yeah. Couldn't be because of America's wars in Iraq, Libya, Afghanistan, Syria. Hey, let's go to Mali. Yeah, why not? We're in Somalia. How about Sudan? And all the corrupt governments. And remember, when Gaddafi was in, he warned Europe that you will have an human waves of migrants and refugees that didn't happen when he was in office. And that's exactly what happened. But hey, the Nobel Peace, the crap prize winner that all those fake liberals love, Barack Obama, a sword has to go, I say. So me and the other crazy bastards and bitches, to be equal here, Hillary Clinton, Samantha Power, Susan Rice, Obama, Cameron, and that other piece of shit. Who was that? Ah, Sarkozy. Destroy that country that was the richest nation in Africa. And caused the problems that they have. And now the place is a hellhole. And speaking of other hellholes. Sudan suspended by Africa Union after protest massacre. They killed over 110 people. And the protesters aren't going to give up. But in America, they got lockjaw over here. Hardly cover the story. Hey, if this happened in Venezuela, we got to bring freedom and democracy to those people. But in Sudan, there's nothing there that we could steal in northern Sudan. If it was the southern Sudan, they have the oil over there. Or the United States split that country up under Obama. Then we'd be concerned. But just like we're not concerned in Yemen that the United States sells all the weapons to create the massacre by the Saudis, our allies, that great democracy in Saudi Arabia, has caused the worst humanitarian crisis on earth. And on the presidential reality show, the freak show, oh, by the way, by the way, this Sunday in New York, live at the comic strip live, I'll be there at 5.30 p.m., with a very, very important announcement. A show that you're not going to want to miss. 
go to the comic strip live online, get your tickets, seating's limited, and it's going to be a show you're not going to want to miss. Anyway, the presidential reality show, because I'm going to be talking about that. No other candidate for the Democratic presidential nomination has been as eager to call for the breakup of Google as Senator Elizabeth Warren, yet employees at Google and its parent company, Alphabet Inc., so far have made up the largest source of high-dollar dono donations to the Massachusetts senator's campaign. And Bernie Sanders, bullshit Bernie, he's right there with him. Each have attracted large amounts of contributions from people connected to Google and other tech companies as they say they're going to break them up. And then finally, people eat at least 50,000 plastic particles a year, study finds. The true number is likely to be many times higher as only a small number of foods and drinks have been analyzed for plastic contamination. Oh, you're worried about global warming? Well, so am I, but how about survival? They're poisoning our water, our air, and our earth. Is there global warming? You know what I say. If they dump trillions of tons of poison into the water, earth, and air, you think it's going to have an effect? So how about we start with this, and then we'll get to global warming. Start with plastics. Start with all the poisons they're feeding us in our food and in our air, and then talk about climate change. This is Gerald Salenti, and that's some of today's Trends in the News.